we have the OGs. It's just an unbelievable, overwhelming experience. Early 2000s fashion. Some of the worst fashion faux pas. And a first time for literally everything. I'm not here to make friends. This is your The Bachelor Greatest Seasons Ever, Episode 5, two seasons in one episode recap. Grab your glasses. It's time for Roses and Rosé. Hey, everybody, it's me, Lauren Zima, in an oversized blazer. Make it work. Oh, hi, you guys. How are you? It's so good to see everyone. Oh, we are here to discuss The Bachelor Greatest Seasons Ever, Episode 5, where we got both The Bachelor, the first season, and The Bachelorette, a season and number one. And in honor of all of the amazing, ill-fitting... Ryan Sutter in a bucket hat. I guess what we're gonna call a zebra print. But I think I was swimming in my dad's suit. In style then, I guess, but really funny now, outfit moments. I'm wearing this. <laughs> Here he is, The Bachelor. So The Bachelor began in 2002, and we had Alex Michelle, the first Bachelor, and Chris Harrison, the first and only Bachelor host, wearing some questionable suits. I'm literally right now wearing Chris Harrison's jacket, you guys, because I kind of thought it would be like oversized, it'd be like really funny. Although I have to say, it's like actually kind of a bit chic. That's a model's pose. You have to like hunch for no reason. Crushed it. So right off the bat, everybody, let's pour our wine. And today, I actually went with a red because I thought if we are going back and going old school, we gotta drink something that is just red like a rose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I've also gone with a very small glass because I just can't seem to stop spilling. Oh God! And so I'm getting a very large base and a low center of gravity and that's, that's what I'm going with because even though my apartment's quite bare, the few items that I do have are incredibly light in color. So, gosh, I'm asking for it with the red though, aren't I? And I'm wearing a little turtleneck, the only one I could find for Miss Trista Sutter, the OG Bachelorette, because we also did her season on this episode, and she wore a lot of turtlenecks. Now we are all in the early 2000s vibes, so JC and Chrisanne have joined me. Chrisanne working a crop top, working a crimped hair, working a gold hoop. JC, ooh, in a very boy band friendly hoodie. And he went ahead and threw on the blazer too. You know what you guys, if you want, if you're feeling festive, and because we're quarantined, and what the f else are we doing? Please go put on some kind of early 2000s outfit. Post it on your Instagram story, I will share it. Let's go back in time together! Because the present's weird, you know? So, let's go back. Cheers. Cheers. What did you think of this episode of The Bachelor Greatest Seasons Ever? What struck me about it was that I was expecting to watch it and think, wow, the show's changed so much. Oh, no, no, no! A same, same, same! I was shocked to find out how many of the staples we love about Bachelor and Bachelorette now were literally there from the beginning. So in the early 2000s words of Hilary Duff, Let's go back, back to the beginning. Let's go back, back to the beginning. So everybody, the franchise is coming clean. Let's get to it! Now we are going to discuss all of the ways that the show is actually incredibly similar. But first, there's one major way that it was major lay different and I didn't even know about it. <gasps> We're not at the Bachelor Mansion! This is where you'll be living for the next six weeks. Where are we? What is this place? The driveway's not wet. There are some wet areas, but it just looks like they just watered those plants. It doesn't look very intentional. This is messy. We think it is the ultimate bachelor pad. Chris Harrison called it the ultimate bachelor pad, but obviously it wasn't because in later seasons we would go to the bachelor mansion and that would definitely become the ultimate bachelor pad. Don't you forget about me. But as much
much as that house mansion pad wasn't that chic. It is the ultimate bachelor pad. The first bachelor was a graduate of not only Harvard, but Stanford as well. Don't drink for every Ivy League degree this guy has. Graduating from Harvard, he attended Stanford University. It's only two, but any excuse. <laughs> okay. Chris Harrison keeps saying, which I think is kind of fun, like big things that were happening when the shows came out. So if The Bachelor came out in 2002, I was gonna ask you, JC and Christian, like where were you in 2002? I was doing theater. Oh, JC was doing theater, me too. Okay, we were doing theater. Not much has changed. Trying to find a quality man is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And look at these audition tapes, you guys. I don't know if they still do, audition tapes actually, but if they do, I mean, anybody can, you know, whip out their iPhone and film one. Back in these days, this was when you, you found a friend and you were like, do you have a camcorder? Does anybody have a digital camera with video capability? Thank you. And again, we are gonna drink for everything that's a little bit different. We still had limos, that was still the same, but we had a little limo driver character. Who's that guy? Don't drink for every time you saw the limo driver. Now, why did they get rid of the limo driver? Because these days, everybody opens the doors for themselves. I think the answer can actually be found here in this night one footage. You see a woman named Kim get out, and the limo driver's face, <laughs> he's just like, yikes. I feel like he's looking at her and thinking, what the f are you doing? <laughs> Hi Alex, I'm Shannon. So we're meeting some of the women, and look, the show talks about sex now, certainly. But I guess I assume that back in the day it didn't necessarily get into it. Uh, no, no, no. We meet Amanda and find out she's purchased a trapeze. The craziest things I've ever done was purchase a trapeze. I don't even really know what that means. <laughs> For some entertainment. Oh, and then there's Trista. First impression of The Bachelor is definitely a good one. But let's do it now. Don't drink for everything that's the same. We had someone give Alex a gift on night one. Dating for dummies. <laughs> there are a ton of candles on Don't Drink for Every Candle. Chris Harrison came in and did a little tank tank on the champagne glass to signal the rose ceremony because yes, there were rose ceremonies. Amanda. And Amanda, the trapeze artist, gets the first rose and spoiler alert, she is who Alex would pick in the end. So oh my gosh, the first rose is always very indicative of who a strong initial attraction is to and that initial attraction also lasts long. In fact, we will see later in the episode that Trista gave her first rose to Ryan and guess what he used to, she chose in the end. I don't know, these are a lot of spoiler alerts. But also it's like these first seasons were spoiler alerts for the whole franchise because so much of the stuff that they did stuck around. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, please drink responsibly because the drinking games on this episode are insane. Be a grown up, put on your oversized blazer, and get ready. Don't drink for every franchise first. Let's talk around. We had the first group date. Who is that guy, and what did he do? to get those five women. The first host! Thankfully, we still have the same host. The first date card! The first private plane! You guys look fantastic. We have the first rose ceremony. Mm-hmm. Gosh, and there's more. Right from the first season, women cried as they left. This is harder than I thought it would be. And Chris Harrison said, take a moment, say your goodbyes. Take a moment and say your goodbyes. The first steal! So, if you don't mind, I'm stealing for a while. Maybe we should have done that. And the first kiss! I might have a little leg up. And then, and then, and then, we had the first boat! And it was a yacht! Oh, the first season of The Bachelor was very chic, everybody. We started strong. If we see some whales, we should watch okay. them. <laughs> oh, and first ambulance. I'm having an anxiety attack. I can't, I can't, there's too many. Too many firsts. Too many things. Too much iconic pop culture. Too many, it's unforgettable. I, okay, got him. 
Give it shape. I, I can't get over this. I truly thought that the franchise had started off a little more tame and built up the drama over the years. No, 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 season one, we called an ambulance on someone. I was so certain I was not going to cry on national TV. So we catch up with Rhonda, who was the first ambulance freak out, and with Lenise, who was the first kiss. It was a wonderful experience. I grew so much, but it definitely hit us like a ton of bricks. So we lift our glass, we lift up the trailblazers of the franchise. Ladies, thank you. We applaud you. We have a drink to you. Some of the questions that you ask, I'm not gonna answer. Right. And some of the things you may wanna do, it's not gonna happen. What was also really interesting was that we even had similar dating issues back then. A woman named Shannon didn't want to get as physical as Alex the Bachelor necessarily did as soon. And speaking of, the first fantasy suite was a deluxe chalet. Deluxe chalet? Ultimately, I think we have Shannon, Amanda, and Trista remaining. And we don't really know much about Amanda other than the trapeze thing. <laughs> For some entertainment. But Shannon is the one sent home, which gives us our first iconic bye. Alex eliminates Shannon. Will you accept this rose? Yes. So he walks her out, but just like Shannon wanted, they are not touching. It's like stone face, like, walking out and not touching, and I'm thinking, is this gonna be it? And then Alex literally kind of whispers to her, we gotta stop at this bench right here. Stop at this bench. <laughs> and I think it was kind of a production cue. It seemed to me that he was telling her, no, 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 really for the show, we have to stop and we have to like talk before you go. Stop at this bench. But they shake hands and she leaves. And then she turns around. And we will raise our glass to this being the first dumpy who wanted an explanation. I'm just curious, why? We are two different people at different parts in our life and we, we I think we'll, we'll struggle with each other too much. What did you think of Alex's explanation? I thought it was solid, but Shannon did not. So cheers to our first just dumped limo rant. I think that Alex is weak. I scared him because I'm not going to sit back and say, okay, Alex, whatever you want. But yeah, the show was sexier than I thought it was going to be in the beginning. We are now back to Amanda. And don't drink for her talking about every cosplay outfit she owns. I love Wonder Woman. I thought she was the coolest thing. I I'm also love Wonder Woman. I have her costume. That is good news. For every deep makeout sesh. Once we opened the envelope, we practically ran out of that restaurant back to the hotel. And then for every night vision moment in the fantasy suite, I couldn't believe this, you guys. They used to have cameras in the fantasy suite? That's not allowed. That's not okay. I don't want this black and white Instagram filter footage. Get it away! JC, stop it. You stop it. Stop doing this to me. Get it away. But I do think Amanda gave him our first, I'm falling in love with you. I'm falling in love with him. And oh gosh, we've still gotta meet Trista. Hi, I'm Alex. Nice to meet you, I'm Trista. But let's fly through meeting Trista because we're going to talk about her more when she is the Bachelorette. So we get our first travel. I think we went to Hawaii. We get our first incident of someone being ill. Oh no, he's doing it, oh gee. Oh. And our first incident of like a stay at home date where you have to show how great of a person you are by like hanging out with that sick person. Also, don't drink for every time Chris Harrison says, will we or won't we talk to Alex Michelle? Mitchell, what is his name? Alex Michelle. Hopefully, we will catch up with him tonight. Will Alex join me for a highly anticipated interview? And what about Alex himself? I still haven't spilled wine on Chris Harrison's blazer, so that's great. Mm -hmm. But Alex Michelle is picking his engagement ring. And it's not Neil Lane. I think you need to look at some rings, huh? That is exactly what I'm looking for. I miss Neil. Where's Neil? 
It doesn't feel right without Neil, right? Who's this lady? So Alex dumps Trista. And I, I hope that we can be friends. And what did you think of the goodbye? I found it to be a bit unceremonious. Alex did not seem super emotionally distraught to me, but let me know in the comments below. And you know, Alex is talking about Amanda, and he says, and I quote, that one of the reasons he is so into her is that she makes him feel good. She makes me feel good. Not a lot of depth there, okay? And then the biggest shock of all. Got this ring for you. Alex didn't propose! I'm gonna hold on to it. Let me explain why. Oh my gosh, you guys. I did not realize that on the very first season of The Bachelor, there wasn't an engagement. He picked out a ring and then he kind of showed it to Amanda and was like, I got this ring, but the thing is, I don't want to give it to you. Can you, we like, Still date? I love it if you would move to California so we can be together. <laughs> okay. What did you guys think of the first season of The Bachelor's finale? Ultimately, spoiler alert, Amanda and Alex are not together anymore and the show did not find Alex. We have tried to get a hold of Alex Michelle for years. We've not been able to. Chris Harrison said that he turned them down for interviews, so we don't know what Alex is doing. Here she is our bachelorette. But now, we're gonna get to a real love story. Something that really fit. So I'm gonna get into the right fit. Trista! Hi. It's the OG bachelorette. Look, of course, spoiler alert, we know that Trista Sutter ended up with Ryan, a firefighter on her season, and I got goosebumps when they first met each other. Hi. How are you? Really good. It's nice to finally meet you. You look ravishing. Thank you. Did you guys let me know in the comments below? So some things I did like about this season, as we got to know the guys, for some reason we went to their real houses. And that's my place right there. Oh, cool. Like there's Greg the musician, and don't tell me that Boo Boo wasn't trying to get famous by being on this show. Greg the musician walked so Jed Wyatt could run. So we are in Greg's apartment in New York. <laughs> And I don't know what's happening. Trista's like, can you get me some water? I'd actually like water. Sure. And that seems to be a real struggle. Like, don't drink for the whole time he's just trying to get her a glass of water. Oh, God, that's not gonna happen. Uh-oh. Poor Greg. He didn't seem to do a very good cleanup job before he left for filming. Like, is that a towel over a cardboard box? Happening. I do think that part of Bachelor and Bachelorette should be, oh, you go back to that person's apartment. You see their real life, real house. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Very telling about Greg. We're talking house. He seemed to have a mouse. Is there a mouse or something? <laughs> Killed that guy years ago. <laughs> but then, right when we're feeling a little bit of trauma, they put us at ease with a bachelor quarantine check-in. It's time again for a bachelor in quarantine check-in. Oh, but this week it's kind of rough. It's with Cassie Randolph and she's just broken up with Colton Underwood. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited. So yeah, Cassie's here looking fabulous, by the way. And she seems to have agreed to do this interview, but she doesn't seem to want to talk that much about her and Colton. Don't drink every time she said she didn't want to get into the specifics of their breakup. Yeah, Don't know like, if I want to talk all about the breakup at all. You know, it's, it's kind of like a sensitive subject. And we haven't really talked about it publicly yet. And I don't know if either of us is ready. Again, I don't really want to go into detail about anything. I Look, I adore both Cassie and Colton. They've always both been lovely to me and I wish them both the best. So whatever happened, hopefully they can move forward positively and supportively. And back to Trista. 
<laughs> Here I am, not knowing where I stand. Here I am, looking for a place to land. So we're really digging into Trista and Ryan's love story. I knew Ryan was a firefighter, but I did not know it that he was a poet. Yes, don't drink for every beautiful romantic poem he wrote to Trista. Heart in the palm of her hand, a boy dying to be her man. She is the rainbow through the rain. She is to me the laughter through the pain. But look, again, I don't really know what's happening on these seasons. Long story short, we're at the finale. And don't drink. Do not drink. Absolutely do not have even a sip. For every petal you see. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> so Ryan is proposing. They get engaged. We cut to the full wedding. They got married on TV. I think like 20 million people watched. 20 million viewers. And by the way, who married them? That is not Chris Harrison. I'll be honest, I asked him about this and he told me at the time they just hadn't even considered like, oh, Chris should get ordained and marry them. So our final first is the wedding. Trista and Ryan were our first bachelor bachelorette franchise wedding and oh, they are still married today. Trista said she wanted a boy and a girl. I want to try for a boy and a girl. They did that. Hey, Blakesers. Hi, Dad. Hey, Peanut. He said, hey, Peanut. <laughs> she wanted kids in a beautiful life. They did that. And we catch up with them and she's crying. I hope you realize how much I appreciate you. Oh, it was amazing, you guys. They were the perfect fit. Just like this wine is fitting well to my face, okay. Mm -hmm. And let me know in the comments below what you thought of this episode. I truly love the trip down memory lane that was familiar yet surprising because I know the franchise, but I didn't watch these seasons. It was so fun to watch. Love to hear you guys' thoughts as always. Everybody, be your own chic, be your own fit, and raise a glass to yourself. You guys, I love you so much. Thank you for watching. I am on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Cameo. If you want a personal message from me, JC and Chrisanne are here in their early 2000s. Where? And we are so happy to continue. We will be back with another episode of The Bachelor. Greatest seasons ever. Bye! You know what? The more you drink, the less wine's in there, and so you're not gonna spill as much. Mm-hmm. Oh, I spilled some but on my pants. Oh, I spilled again.